Boo! You, you jump! Anyways, hey everybody, Frostfinnick here, and welcome back to another Frost Reads Reddit! And since we're continuing our stories for Spooky Month, I decided to do the prequel to the last one. Also, I've kind of discovered that I really like being scared, so even after Spooky Month ends, I might actually just keep doing this kind of content, because I really enjoy doing it. There's just something about the feeling of my fur standing on end and the cold chill running up my spine that I really like. Ooh, and don't get me started on Lovecraft! I absolutely love cosmic horror! Anyways, our story for this week is another one from Biffle's Disciple. Oh, and by the way, you guys should thank Kit for helping out with the voices this week! I tried to do it on my own last time, but I'm not good at it. And it came out weird, and Kit had to use an audio theme, and... Well, anyways, our story is titled, I Work in Customer Service, but no one deserves this job hazard. Excuse me. My tea was cold, I received no turndown service, and the girl down the hall was very rude to me. I looked up from my desk to the man with hands tucked into his skinny jeans as he glared at me over Gucci sunglasses. You hung the privacy please sign on your door, ordered iced tea, and told the girl that her art sucked more than a hungry litter of newborn kittens. That was an exact quote, I said as I frowned at him. The man scowled. I expect better treatment at your price point. I can afford the Hilton, but I come here for the ambiance, and that girl ruined it. <sighs> I moved aside a glass of water, pushed away the paperwork, stood up, and folded my arms. Over the years, I've come to recognize when certain guests are going to spend half the day demanding all of my attention. The girl is also a guest. I have no control over her behavior. Mr. Skinny Jeans folded his arms and leaned forward. Maybe you're just not trying hard enough. The fur on the back of my neck stood up. She's six years old. You made her cry. You can't coddle children. It turns them into snowflakes. He looked around the living room that also served as my office. I should have gone with the Hilton. Everyone raves about that stupid garden you use to feed the guests, but your breakfast was blasé at best. This is just a shitty house, and it's much smaller than my own, which is very large. That chill ran through my neck again, like something was breathing just behind me. The curtains tickled my cheek despite the absence of any breeze. Sir, you're at a bed and breakfast. The whole point is that you're staying in my house. He grunted and stared at my painting of the... Pequod? Pequod? I, I, I don't know how to say that. The painting of the thingy above the mantle. I shouldn't have listened to the online reviews. This house would be much nicer if you got rid of the shitty art and furniture. The chill ran past my neck, into my back, through my chest, and out my stomach leaving me lukewarm inside. Sir, please don't insult the house. It's one of the oldest continuously inhabited residents in Massachusetts and- And no one cared enough about it to make improvements since 1850. <laughs> it's not your fault. Some people are born without taste. The glass of water tipped over, spilling across the day's paperwork. My stomach dropped. Sir, I'm a very open-minded person, but the one policy upon which I must insist is that you do not insult the Watcher- Who came up with such a stupid name for this house? And his sunglasses fell to the floor and cracked in two. What the fuck? Those are worth three grand, you bitch. I didn't touch them, I answered in a tone of forced control. As I explained upon arrival, the only we have is that you do not insult the house. How do you expect me not to insult something that sucks? He spat as he slammed his boot against the broken glass. I'm the smartest person in this room and you know it. 
I have clients who practically run the state of Connecticut and they'll have this place shut down. Sir, this isn't Connecticut. I'm going to pack my things. I won't be staying another night. <sighs> the lukewarm streak in my stomach turned fiery as the room got warmer. Sir, I whispered, please just leave this house immediately and I will refund your visit. Then he looked down at me with a victorious smile. It's too late to apologize. He shook his head, never breaking eye contact with me. You have a pleasing frame, and probably could have changed my mind if you were 40 years younger. But you just have to accept the fact that you're not as hot as you once were. And skinny jeans turned around, crossed the room, and climbed the stairs to the second floor. The heat left my stomach as papers on my desk fluttered, and the door slammed behind him without being touched. Nausea gripped my gut as I collapsed into my chair, panting. I rested my forehead in my open palms, my entire body shaking. Mm, fluff. Nineteen minutes later, I had climbed the thirteen steps to the second floor. My hands trembled as I walked down the narrow hallway eyeing the final door on my left. Was it safe to check? Of course not, but it never would be. I struggled to twist the knob as my sweaty palms slipped across metal. It took three attempts to open the door. I prayed that it wouldn't be a terrible sight. But it was a terrible sight. A coppery smell hit me before anything else, and I couldn't force myself not to stare at the carnage. How did so much blood get on the ceiling? I whispered. The bed sheets fluttered, followed by curtains near where I stood. Then my stomach went from hot to lukewarm to cold to hot again as my arms turned frigid. I gasped and stepped back suddenly, very afraid. I'm not complaining, I announced to the room. I, I'll clean it up. Taking a tentative step over a rogue eyeball, I lifted what had once been Skinny Jeans' arm. It felt uncannily like an oversized turkey leg from the Renaissance Fair. You know me, I explained to the ostensibly empty room. I always look on the bright side. It'll be enough to fertilize the whole garden, and that keeps our guests coming back year after year. Woo! Eat. I love it, but I, I didn't know that this was going to come off of our slash entitled people, too. Personally, I think horror stories are better when the person who gets turned into goo isn't a complete douche canoe. But that's just me. I mean, I know a lot of people will probably have that nice bit of satisfaction from the idea of Mr. Skinny Jeans being turned into goo by some unseen force inside the room. Also, seriously, if you're going to a bed and breakfast and one of the only rules that they have is don't insult the house, don't insult the house. Seriously, especially in old houses. Cause really you have no idea who or what is listening to you from inside the walls. E. Anyways, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed the story and if you want to let me know what you think, leave a comment down below. I love reading your guys' comments. <laughs> but anyways, until next time, everybody. Bye! <laughs> oh yeah, I want to show our patrons some love too because they're awesome. Their contributions help us to afford all the neat stuff we use to record. So thank you, and um, if you want to become a patron too, you can click the link down in the description. You'd really be helping the channel out, and you'd get a couple nifty goodies too. Anyways, if you made it this far in the video, then yay! You're amazing! By the way, subscribe! Please don't make a foxy bag. Mm.